Well done. Well, welcome and Merry Christmas Eve to you. It's great to see all of you here. I know you're out there. I can hear you snoring. Hello. <laughs> Let us be an attitude of prayer together. Lord, what a night. A night above all nights. A day above all days when we celebrate your birth. The word become flesh. When we tried to reach for you, you instead reached for us in Jesus Christ. Wow. And we celebrate that tonight. It's overwhelming to think about. And so we play and sing music and we give prayers and we read scripture to try to get our souls and minds around it. But still, Lord, it is amazing. And now, Lord, you've given me the amazing privilege and responsibility of preaching your word to these my friends and your servants. Lord, a task I need your strength in order to do. So, Lord, speak to me and through me in such a way that all of us do receive a word from you tonight that will make a difference to our lives. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, I have to brag a little bit. Christmas for me is extra special this year because I have a four-year-old son, and you know that Christmas is very special for four-year-olds, and so I am seeing Christmas through different eyes this year, and I'm having a lot of fun. I predict that a lot of Nerf darts will be around my house tomorrow. But children have a way of changing your perspective, don't they? I mean, the other day I was trying to get my son dressed in the living room. He just had his pants on, no shirt, no shoes. He was running around. I said, Paul, Paul, get over here. I got to get you dressed. And he just kept running around. And the more I asked him, the more he ran around because he knew full well that he was taking advantage of me because mommy is the expert at those kinds of things. So he kept running and running around and finally he stopped and just when I thought he was going to comply, you know what this kid said? Alexa, play Bad Romance by Lady Gaga. <laughs> ba, ba, da, 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 who is this kid? How does he know this? What has he been doing with my wife during the day with Alexa? How does he know how to say Alexa? I'm sorry if all your phones went nuts when I said Alexa. So I said, Alexa, stop music. And it stopped. I said, Paul, get over here. I got to get your shirt on. I got to get your shoes on. And then he said, but daddy, why? Do I have school today? And suddenly it dawned on me. It was a Saturday. I had nothing to do. We had nothing to do. No errands to run. No meetings to attend. No sermons to write. Nothing to do at all. But I was so used to hurrying from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next, on this treadmill, from one thing to the next, to the next. And here was this child of mine showing me life and light and joy. And I was missing it. And so you and I did. I said, Alexa, play Bad Romance by Lady Gaga. And we danced. Ba, ba, ja, ja, ja. I don't know this song. Y'all know it. Some of you do, and we danced and danced and danced. You know, life has a way of getting so stressful, doesn't it? We get so stressed in life that we forget to enjoy the blessings in life. And ironically, this happened most, most often during the Christmas season. The most wonderful time of the year ends up being quite often, right? The most stressful time of the year, dinners to attend, parties to attend, Christmas cards to write, expectations to meet, not to mention negotiating COVID in the midst of all of it. I mean, I don't know how anybody remains sane at all this year. Amen? Amen. 
In fact, some of you are seriously doubting your sanity right now, I know. Well, tonight, I'm here to help all of us get our sanity back, hopefully. Hear this. Let's not get so busy making Christmas special that we forget what makes it special. And what makes it so special? Well, my son Paul reminded me the other day when he was running and dancing around the living room. He refused to let his light go out. He was demonstrating the power of Christmas even though he didn't realize it. Listen to what the Gospel of John says about Christmas. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. The light shines in the darkness and did not overcome it. You know what Christmas is about? It's about the light of Jesus Christ penetrating a dark and desperate world. That's why Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And his light is so powerful. His light is so transforming. His light is so healing that darkness never overcomes it. Not the darkness of sin, not the darkness of death, not the darkness of evil, not the darkness of disease. Nothing overcomes the light of Jesus Christ. So you could say Christmas is celebrating the invincible light of Jesus Christ. And you want to know what else? What is so amazing about this light of Jesus Christ? Is that if we believe in Christ and follow him, you know what he does? He gives us that light through the power of the Holy Spirit. Listen to what verse 12 says of the same chapter. To all who received Jesus, who believed in him, he gave the power to become children of God. Power. What kind of power? The power to share our light to share the light of the world, Jesus Christ, that kind of power. I believe that's what Jesus had in mind when he said, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. That's what we're called to do. I mean, why do you think the best part of the service for so many of you is lighting the candle at the end of the service and singing Silent Night? What do you think we're doing? We're sharing the light of Christ with one another. So when you leave tonight, don't throw your light into the basket with your candle. Keep it with you and share it with the world that so desperately needs it right now. Robert Louis Stevenson once wrote about the time when he was a child and when he was a kid, he, he lived during the ages of the lamplighters. He used to go down the street and, and light the lamps on the street. And he would get up early in the morning to watch them. And if his mother was up, he would often say, Mom, Mom, come. Come watch the man who's punching holes in the darkness. That's what we're called to do as Christ followers, especially at Christmas, to take the light of Jesus Christ and punch holes in the darkness around us. But I know it's been a tough year, to say the least, a very tough year, and some of our lights have gone dim. In fact, if we're honest, some of our lights have completely gone out. Between all the mess going on in the world and all the things going on in our personal lives, there's chippiness, there's irritation, there's argument, there's pain, there's discouragement, there is fear. I heard someone the other day say the greatest overstatement, excuse me, the greatest understatement in the world. She said, you know what? I think one of the symptoms of COVID is unreasonableness. Wow, what an understatement, right? But I know some of you are thinking, Charlie, this sounds great, but I'm tired. I'm tired. And I'm discouraged. And I don't know if I can shine that light. I don't know if I have the energy and the, the wherewithal to get that light again. How do I get it back? I want to shine it, but Charlie, how do I get it back? 
Well, I think one of the ways we get that light back is by remembering how invigorating and how empowering it was for us to receive that light from someone else. You know, back in 1997, Fred Rogers, or as we like to call him, Mr. Rogers, was given a a great award, a Lifetime Achievement Award from the National Academy of Television and Art and Sciences for his show, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, that many of us love. And when Mr. Rogers got up to give his acceptance speech, as you can imagine, it was not the typical acceptance speech. This is what he said. So many people have helped me come here to this night. Some of you are here, some are far away, and some are even in heaven. All of us have special ones who have loved us into being. Would you just take along with me 10 seconds to think of the people who have helped you become who you are? those who cared about you and wanted what was best for you in life. Whomever you've been thinking about, how pleased they must be to know the difference you feel they have made. I'd like for you to do that exercise right now. Just take a few seconds and think of those people in your life who have shined their light on you, who have shared their light with you, who have loved you into being, who have made you who you are. Maybe it's a a loved one who's sitting next to you. Maybe it's a loved one you miss right now at this Christmas because they have passed away. But all of us have them. There is nothing more powerful. There is nothing more attractive. There is nothing more transforming than sharing the light and the kindness and the love of Jesus Christ. We know it because those of us who have been recipients of it have experienced it. So Christmas comes around each and every year to remind us to share that light with other people. That's what Christmas reminds us of. Is there someone in your life right now who needs that light? Is there someone in your neighborhood? Is there someone in your circle of friends who needs your light, who is such in a dark place they need that light? It doesn't take much. I mean, just the other day, I I can't remember where I was. Maybe I was waiting in line for uh, for some food or waiting in line somewhere. And there was a a lady in front of me and she turned around and she looked all frustrated because she had to wait. And all I did was smile at her. You know what she said? Thank you. Yeah, I know. I was surprised too. (laughs) Remember, Jesus was born in a very simple little manger, which means... God can take the smallest of things, the smallest of cracks, and let his light shine through. It doesn't take much, folks. You know, Bruce Wilkinson in his book, You Were Born for This, writes about a young lady named Lauren who was staying at a swanky New York City hotel for business. And every morning for two weeks when she was staying at that hotel, she would go to the hotel gym to work out. And every morning that she did that, she would run into Marta, the Hispanic lady on staff there. And Lauren was a cheerful person, and she would greet Marta and talk to her and smile at her, and and Marta would just light up. Well, one day, Lauren was shopping, and she felt the nudge of the Spirit to buy some gifts for Marta, and so she put together a gift basket filled with bath salts and, and lotion And she gave it to Marta, and you would have thought Marta had received a pot of gold. She was overwhelmed. She said, oh my gosh, I'm so tired at the end of the day. You have no idea what this means to me. Well, a couple of days before Lauren left the hotel, her husband had sent her a bouquet of beautiful flowers. And Lauren decided to leave those flowers with Marta. And when she did, Marta grabbed Lauren's hand and said, you have no idea what you've meant to me these last two weeks. 
You have noticed me. Nobody notices me. I've looked forward to coming to work for two weeks because I, I, I knew I would see you and I would smile. You have no idea what you've meant to me. You know what love is? Here's a great definition of love to remember. Love is showing someone else their own beauty. Love is shining a light on someone else's beauty. That's what love is. And the truth is, if we're honest, none of us can see that beauty ourselves sometimes. We need someone else's light. And that's what it means to be followers of Christ at Christmas, to leave our light on so other people can see their beauty, so other people can see that they're children of God. I've preached it before and I'll preach it again. One of the biggest problems in this world is that people just don't know how loved they are by God. As a pastor, you can imagine how many people I come across who don't know how loved they are by God, who don't see their own beauty. And Jesus Christ calls us to shine our light on their beauty. That's what love is. Imagine if every Christian in this world, that's about 2.2 billion people, about 30% of the world's population, got up each and every day and said, I'm going to shine my light on other people, on their beauty. Could you imagine the difference that would make? But here's the problem. Unfortunately, many Christians, they hide their light by favoring hate over love, judgment over grace, dogma over forgiveness. The sad thing is, if you look at some Christians, you'd think Jesus said, let your judgments and your opinions so shine that nobody in their right mind would want to be a Christian. But too many Christians are known by the, the darkness that they cast rather than the lights that they show. And here's the problem with that. If the ultimate goal is for other people to see the light of Jesus in us, how in the heck can they see that light when our judgments and our opinions are blocking it? I love what Madeline Lee Angle said. I love this. She said, we draw people to Christ not by telling them how wrong they are and how right we are, but we draw people to Christ by sharing a light that is so lovely that people want to know with all their hearts the source of it. When was the last time you did that? You know, the light went out for some Christians, but not for all. Because see, here is the truth. Having the Christmas spirit doesn't mean insisting on people saying Merry Christmas instead of Happy Holidays. Having the Christmas spirit doesn't mean insisting on saying to everyone, keep Christ in Christmas or Jesus is the reason for the season. You know what it means to have the Christmas spirit? It means being Christmas to other people. It means shining the light of Christ on them. It means leaving your light on. You know, the light didn't go out, refused to go out in a small town of Wakanda, Illinois, some years ago, a small, small town of about 6,000 people. And for years, they had this tradition where every Christmas, they would put these huge illuminated crosses on the water towers, well, the time came when someone came along and said to the town council, well, we're going to sue your city if you don't take those down because of separation of church and state. Well, they begrudgingly took those down. And you want to know what that community did, that small community in Illinois did? They didn't counter sue. They didn't get angry and organize protest. You know what they did? They said, oh, that's okay. We're going to buy just about every Christmas light we can find and drape it all over every house in this community. And that's what they did. 
About every house in that community looked like Clark Griswold's house in Christmas Vacation. They bought every light. They put it on roofs. They put it on trees. They draped it everywhere, so much so that uh, even airplanes mistook it for an airport, a runway. You could see the town from the freeway from miles and miles and miles away. At night, that town was as bright as the day because they refused to let their light go out. For the love of Christmas, leave your light on because this world is desperate for it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Eternal God, remind us, especially those of us who choose to follow you, that your light is within us. And we don't want to hide it under a bushel, no. We want to let it shine, especially right now when everybody, everywhere they turn, they see darkness and bad news and they need light and we have it. Compel us, Lord, empower us to share it. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.